What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about storage devices such as optical drives, solid state drives, magnetic hard drives, hybrid drives, flash drives, and various storage device configurations. Let's talk about optical drive. So in computing, an optical drive is a disk drive that uses laser, light, or electromagnetic waves within or near the visible light spectrum as part of the process of reading or writing data to or from optical disks by way of continuous spirals of indentations called pits and lands that are burned into the non-label side of the disk from the middle outward to the edge. There are three main categories for optical drives. You have CDs such as CD-ROMs, CD-Rs, and CD-RWs. DVDs such as DVD-ROMs, DVD-ROM, CD-RW combos, and all that other stuff on your screen. And then you have Blu-rays such as BD-ROMs or combo BD-ROM, DVD, Super, Multi, BDR, and bd R E just a whole bunch of letters all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have our optical drive capacity. So you have Blu-ray that has the highest capacity and it uses a blue laser with a short wavelength for DVDs or CDs. You have DVD that uses a red laser with a longer wavelength than Blu-ray, but shorter than that of a CD. And then you have CD, which has the lowest capacity and that uses a near infrared laser with the longest wavelength. Now, the differences in laser wavelengths for each optical drive determines the storage capacities for Blu-ray, DVD, and CD optical drives. The shorter the wavelength, the smaller the pits and lands on the disk, and shorter wavelengths enable more data to be stored in the same space. Let's talk about CDR, CD-ROMs, and CDRW. So a CDR is a compact disc that can be written once and read many times, but data cannot be deleted. 80-minute CDRs have a capacity of 700 megabytes, whereas the older 74-minute CDRs have a capacity of 650 megabytes. A CD-ROM, which stands for Read Only Memory, is a pre-pressed optical compact disc that can contains data. Computers can read CD-ROMs but not write to or erase the data on them. A CD-RW is a compact disc that can be written, read, erased, and rewritten to up to one thousand times. CDRWs have a capacity up to 700 megabytes, but depending on how the disc is formatted, it can be less. We have four types of CDRW media. You have CDRW 1X by 4X. You have high speed CDRW 4X by 12X, ultra speed CDRWs 12X to 24X, and ultra speed plus CDRWs, which is 32X. Drives compatible with faster media types can usually work with slower media types, but not the other way around. Let's talk about DVD recordable and rewritable standards. So a DVD, which stands for digital versatile disc or digital video disc is a digital optical disc data storage medium that can store any kind of digital data and is widely used for software and other computer files, as well as video programs watch using DVD players. DVDs offer higher storage capacities than CDs while having the same dimensions. DVD-R and DVD plus R media is recordable but not erasable, whereas DVD RW and DVD plus RW media uses a phase change medium similar to CDRW and can be rewritten up to 1,000 times. 
You got your DVD media types that you need to be concerned with for the comp to your A plus 220 1001 examination are as follows. The DVD ROM, a read only DVD commonly used for storing large software applications. It is similar to a CD ROM, but has a larger capacity. A DVD ROM stores around 4.38 gigabits of data, whereas a CD ROM stores around 650 megabits megabytes of data then you need to be concerned with the dvd rw this is a single-sided rewritable erasable media similar to the cd rw which has a capacity of 4.7 gigabytes dvd rw drives can also write to dvd r media and finally you need to know about the dvd r DL. This is a single-sided, writable, non-erasable media similar to CDRs with a second recording layer. It has a capacity of 8.4 gigabytes. Let's talk about Blu-ray. So Blu-ray disc is a digital optical disc storage format designed to supersede the DVD format, capable of storing several hours of video in high definition. The main application of Blu-ray is as a medium for video material such as feature films and for the physical distribution of video games for gaming systems. The name Blu-ray refers to the blue laser, which is actually a violet laser, used to read the disc, which allows information to be stored at a greater density than is possible with the longer wavelength red laser used for DVDs. There are two types of Blu-ray medias that you need to be concerned with for the CompTIA 220 1001 examination, and they are as follows. BD-R. This is recordable, non-erasable. It is similar to a CDR, DVD plus or minus R, DVD-R, and it has a 25 gigabyte capacity. The next one you need to be concerned with is the BDRE. This is recordable and rewritable, and it is similar Similar to the CDRW, DVDRW, DVD plus or minus RW, and it has a 25 gigabyte capacity. Now note that CDs and DVD media are also compatible with Blu-ray drives. All right, let's move on to hard drives. So the first hard drive we're going to talk about is the solid state drive, also known as the SSD. So an SSD is a type of mass storage device similar to a hard disk drive. It supports reading and writing and maintains stored data in a permanent state, even without power. SSDs are rapidly becoming the system drive of choice for laptops and convertible computers, as well as for performance oriented desktop computers and servers. These drives use various types of high performance flash memory to store files and they could be used for the operating systems, apps, and data because there is no need to move read write heads to various storage areas of the drive to locate data. SSDs are faster than mechanical hard drives and are not affected by shock. SSD is currently more expensive with less capacity than HDD hard disk drives, but SSD capacity is improving and costs are dropping. An SSD is typically 2.5 inches wide, but some made for very small laptops are available in a 1.8 inch wide form factor. Most SSDs connect to the motherboard with SATA interfaces. When any type of SSD is used, an internal or external hard drive can also be used to provide additional storage for apps and data. And here is a wonderful picture of a typical SSD. Let's talk about M.2 drives. And yes, it is pronounced M.2. And this is an SSD that looks like a RAM stick that conforms to a computer industry specification and is used in internally mounted storage expansion cards of a small form factor. So in layman's terms, M.2 SSDs can be mounted directly onto a motherboard 
or an expansion card, thereby giving the drive more access to the CPU for faster reading than is possible with an SSD. In order to mount a M.2 SSD, the motherboard must be specifically designed to accept an M.2 SSD, meaning older systems are more than likely not going to be able to utilize an M.2 SSD. Let's talk about the SSHD. So a solid state hybrid drive is a logical or physical storage device that combines a faster storage medium such as SSD with a higher capacity HDD. The intent is adding some of the speeds of SSDs to the cost effective storage capacities of traditional HDDs. The purpose of the SSD in a hybrid drive is to act as a cache for the data stored on the HDD, improving the overall performance by keeping copies of the most frequently used data on the faster SSD. A SSHD resembles a standard HDD, but it also includes up to eight gigabytes of high speed flash memory. An SSHD is a combination HDD and SSD offering up the four terabytes of storage that can be accessed several times faster than with an HDD. SSDs are more expensive than spinning disk drives. However, they have many advantages over their rivals such as SSDs use smaller form factors so they can fit into smaller spaces, they run cooler, and they are much faster than spinning disk drives. And here is a pretty little chart that I put together that you can find on my website, giving you the comparisons of various types of hard drives. Let's talk about NVMe. So NVM Express is an open logical device interface specification for accessing non-volatile storage media attached via the PCIe bus. The acronym NVM stands for non-volatile memory, which is often NAND flash memory that comes in several physical forms, including SSDs, PCIe adding cards, M.2 cards, amongst other forms. NVMe as a logical device interface, not a physical form factor like M.2 nor an interface like PCIe, but it can be used with both M.2 and PCIe. But this thing has been designed to capitalize on the low latency and internal parallelism of SSDs. The biggest reasons SSDs are much faster than HDDs is due to the lack of moving parts. However, this benefit created another issue, and that issue is the data transfer bottlenecks that are caused due to SSDs using the much slower HDD infrastructure. This led to the inception of the NVMe, which is designed to allow SSDs to transfer data between the motherboard and the SSD at much higher rates. NVMe uses a process called command queuing to send requested data to the controller of the motherboard. Command queuing allows for NVMe to process more than 65,000 queues at one time with each queue containing up to 65,000 commands. Let's talk about SATA 2.5. So SATA 2.5 refers to an HDD with a 2.5 inch form factor where they are typically found in laptops and the larger 3.5 inch form factor HDDs are found mostly in desktops. The 2.5 inch refers to the size of the spinning platters inside the HDDs. They are connected to the motherboard with a SATA cable internally. 3.5 inch form factor HDDs have capacities that can range from 500 gigabytes to two terabytes and in some cases as high as eight terabytes. SATA 2.5 inch form factor SSDs for laptops can have capacities that range from 500 gigs to one terabyte and in some cases as high as three terabytes.
Let's talk about the magnetic hard disk drives or the HDD. So a hard drive is an electromagnetic data storage device that uses magnetic storage to store and retrieve digital data using one or more rigid rotating platters, which could be either aluminum or glass that are coated with a magnetic material. The platters are paired with magnetic heads, usually are arranged on a moving actuator arm, which read and write data to the platter surfaces. These platters are coated with a durable magnetic surface divided into sectors. Each sector contains 512 bytes of storage along with information about where the sector is located on the disk medium. Sectors are organized in concentric circles from the edge of the media inward towards the middle of the platter. These concentric circles are called tracks. HDs, are also the most important storage devices used by personal computers in which they store the operating systems and loads it into the computer's memory, also known as the RAM at startup. HDs also store applications, system configuration files used by applications in the operating system and data files created by the user. And here is a pretty picture of a typical hard drive that you would find in most desktop computers. Let's talk about the spin rate real quick. So the speed at which hard disk media turns is called the spin rate and it is measured in revolutions per minute. And here is a pretty little chart that I put together that you can look at on your own leisure. I'm going to visit my website technologyg.com. Let's talk about flash drive. So a flash drive is a small ultra portable storage device, which unlike an optical drive or a traditional hard drive, it has no moving parts and it can retain its contents without electricity. Flash drives are often referred to as pin drives, thumb drives or jump drives, but it can also be referred to as memory cards that are used for digital cameras, camcorders and other types of digital media players. With that, we have what is called a flash card reader. A memory card reader is a device for accessing the data on a memory card, such as compact flash, secure digital, multimedia cards, micro SD cards, mini SD cards, and XD cards. Most card readers assign a separate drive letter to each slot on a PC. Memory card readers come as separate external devices. Some printers and multifunctional devices also include card readers, as well as some computers have slots built in for card readers. Let's move on to storage device configuration. So a common reason for adding storage is to create a fault tolerant set of drives that will protect data in case a drive fails. Let's talk about some various RAID types that are associated with this. So RAID, that stands for redundant array of inexpensive or independent disks. And this is a data storage virtualization technology that combines multiple physical disk drive components into one or more logical units for the purposes of data redundancy, performance improvement, or both. The most common RAID levels include RAID level zero, also known as just RAID zero. This is also known as a stripe set or striped volume where it splits or stripes data evenly across two or more disks without parity information, redundancy or fault tolerance. The drives are treated as a single drive and the drives are used to simultaneously store different portions of the same file striping boost performance but if either drive fails all data is lost do not use striping for data drives the next one we have is called raid one and this consists of an exact copy or mirror of a set of data on two or more disks and changes to the contents of one drive are immediately reflected on the other drive this configuration offers no parity striping or spanning of disk space across multiple disks since the data is mirrored on all disks belonging to the array and the array can only be as big as the smallest member disk this layout is useful when read performance or reliability is more important than write performance or the resulting storage capacity. The array will continue to operate so as long as at least one member drive is operational. 
Next, we have raid level five, and this consists of block level striping with distributed parity. Three or more drives are treated as a logical array and parity information, which is used to recover data in the event of a drive failure is spread across all drives in the array, suitable for use with all program and data drives. And then we have raid 10. Four drives combined striping plus mirroring for extra speed plus better reliability. This is suitable for use of program and data drives. RAID 10 is a striped set of mirrors. Now also understand that most PCs with RAID support include support for levels 0, 1, and 10. Some high performance desktop systems also support RAID 5. Systems that lack the desired level of RAID support can use a RAID add-on card. And finally, let's talk about hot swappable drives. So a hot swappable drive is a drive that can be removed safely from a system or be connected to a system without having to shut the system down first. The following drives can be hot swapped in Windows, and that is USB drives, eSATA drives, SATA drives, and flash memory drives. In most enterprise systems, the RAID drives are hot swappable. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some check on learning, shall we? So the first question is, which type of internal hard drive combines high performance and capacity at a relatively low device cost? Is it SSD, flash drive, magnetic drive, USB drive, or SSHD? So which type of internal hard drive combines high performance and capacity at a cheap price? The correct answer is... Uh, SSHD are solid state hybrid drives. Yes, there's a combination between a solid state drive and a hard disk drive. Next question. Which of the following sizes is the most common magnetic hard disk form factor used in laptops? Is it 3.5 inches, 5.25 inches, 1.8 inches, are 2.5 inches. So which of the following sizes is the most common magnetic hard disk form factor used in laptops? The correct answer is 2.5 inch form factor is the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. And the final question is, due to size restrictions and the compact nature of laptop devices, this type of storage media has become less commonly found on new laptops. What is it? Is it flash drives? Is it optical drives? Is it solid state drives? Or is it magnetic drives? So due to the size restrictions of new laptops, you really don't see this around too much. The correct answer is uh, optical drives. You really don't see too many brand new laptops with optical drives. If you have to have an optical drive, chances are you're gonna have to buy an external optical drive that can connect via USB, all right? so. In summary, we have talked about optical drives, solid state drives, magnetic drives, hybrid drives, flash drives, and various storage configurations. Now, if you felt like you have gotten something valuable out of this information, please go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, hit that subscribe button. Also, go visit my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.